Alrighty, so before we begin, I want you all to make sure you have your food buffs and potions where they should be. Make sure that your gear is repaired and that you have repair kits, soul gems, everything where it should be. And then I want you to go into settings, gameplay, make sure custom colors are on. And then I want you to set enemy color to a bright pink or similar color, something that really stands out even when there's fire around you, lightning, anything else. And that it can't be confused with a friendly AoE. And then let's go into Raid Notifier for people who do have Raid Notifier. Um, and let's scroll down to Cloud Rest, open that up. Now, I'm gonna say on, first of all, everything that you can set on and off. There's only two things that are gonna be off. So if you s put everything on and then go to Seroria Roaring Flame. If you look below that, it's Track Roaring Flame. Roaring Flare, this should be off. And then Samaja, only important mechanics on Execute, this should be off. Anything else should be on, as far as on and off toggles go. Now let's take a look at the drop-down menus. So let's go from Faraliele, Horfrost, should be set to all. Seroria, Roaring Flame, all. Balanaril, Voltaic, Overload, should be to self. Now, mini boss, heavy attack should be on if you're a tank. Yagra monstrosity, baneful barb should be on if you are a tank. And Samaja Nocturnal's favor should be on if you are a tank. And everyone should have crushing darkness set to self, the last one. When you mention on for the tank ones, do we talk about <clears throat> self or all? For example, mini boss oh, yeah. attack or baneful barb. Is that all? Um, or self? Actually, you can you can set it to self. Okay. Uh, it's the most important thing. It's only to give you a heads up when it's targeting you. Right. Um, you will obviously be in charge of like keeping taunt as well, so that it doesn't go on anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, alrighty. Now I want healers and tanks to slot warhorn and call it out with my horn. Now a little something about callouts here. Um, make it only necessary callouts. So, you guys uh, did better and better as we went along next, uh, last time, but I just want to be super clear that if you encounter any issues or have any questions during the fight, save it till the end of the fight and we will discuss it. So, for example, if you wonder why you died or anything like that, make a screenshot or a mental note of what your de death recap said and we will take a look at it together when we have the time. Um, also, keep it positive. Keep it light. And also, uh, I want people in Portal. We're going to go through the Portal groups. But I want to hear from you, not just I'm dead. I want you to say your name, dead. And then I want you to say who goes in. So we're going to pair you guys to make this super clear to everyone. Uh, but we're going to go through those Portal groups in a second. We can move in and go to our left after the bridge. So, this one is Galenway and Falariella. This is the Horfrost boss. So, I'm going to go through the general mechanics here. Uh, a general uh, point about the positioning here. So, the Griffin and the Rider needs to be kept separate. So, DPS, you focus on the Griffins when the Griffin is down, and the Rider when the Griffin is flying. Um, it's also really important to note that the Rider will target people with an ice explosion mechanic it will be placed on three players you'll get like a large aoe around you and when this happens you need to make sure not to overlap and you need to block it all right now about the horror frost this is going to be repeats for a lot of you but i'm gonna go through all this anyway since we're recording um the horror frost is this whirlwind that we need to take turns to carry it's very important that this is not let loose for a long period of time because it will deal a lot of damage to the group if it's not picked up you pick this up by just walking into it and then you shed it after a few seconds by pressing the synergy called shed horfrost and after this you say horfrost is down or shedding horfrost then someone else needs to pick it up now very important do not bring the horfrost down to the portal uh, if someone in the portal group has it you need to call it out so that someone else can go down there instead of you um, also, don't pick it up if you know that it's your turn to go in next. 
So how do you know if you really have the hoarfrost on you? You will be slowed down, and your character will glow white. After a while, you'll be so slow that you barely can move. And then you need to make sure to shed it. If you keep it on you too long, you will die. Alright? Okay. Now, um... A couple of things to... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go through the portal groups. So, we need... On these first three fights, we need three DDs in one group and three DDs in the other. So, remember now that Arc and Fire, you are only going to go down, as you know, in the last fight in Samaja. So, this is only for the three DDs in each group for now. So, Fire and Arc, you will wait until the last fight. Now, Sam and Kitsune, you are a pair. Elric and Eva, you are a pair. And Drakens and Burntrix, you are a pair. That means if Elric dies, he needs to say, Elric down, Eva go portal. Alright? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Cool. 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 Yes, being a two year old. And Sam, you need to pay extra attention to whether Kitsune is alive or not, since she's muted. Yep. Alrighty. Um... So, let's go through what happens in the portals. So... When you go down into the portal, you will see a bunch of crystals that you need to kill. These need to be killed as fast as possible. Once a crystal is killed, a spear will appear up on this plane. Now, it's up to uh -huh. our kite healer and anyone else standing close to it to drop down the spear. Once this spear has been dropped, you will see it appear in the portal realm. All right? Once you see a spear, and only once you actually see the spear come down, do you pick up the purple orb in the portal, and then you walk it to the spear. Now, on these first three fights, we won't have a boss down there. That's why the tank won't go with you. But in the last fight, there will also be a couple of different mechanics that we will go through once we get to Samaja. But that is all you need to know about the portals for now. Um, also important to note that you the portal will appear in the middle of the arena. It's going to be a purple door. And you need to walk up to it and use a synergy to get into it. I think you all know this by now. But I'm just repeating it because we're going to clip this later. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, yeah. Please don't Are there... on the portal. Yeah. yeah. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes for everyone in here. So two <laughs> things. First of all, do not drop Horfrost near the portal. That means if you have Horfrost, try to move away from the portal when you drop it so that people don't accidentally pick it up when they go in. This is very important. Second thing, if you see a spear close to you, don't think twice. Just drop it. Now for tanks. Um, uh, Ark, do you still want to take Griffin or do you want to try to take Ryder this time? Uh, I'll go with the Griffin since I learned how to do that. Alrighty. If fire is okay with it, of course. What do you say, Fire? Yeah. All good. All right, cool. So Fire will be on Rider. Um, now, when you're tanking the Griffins, as you know from last time, there will be some nasty bleed uh, put on you by those claw sweeps that it, it does. So make sure to try and roll dodge those. You know the drill. Uh, Fire, you know what to do. Would you like to tell anyone watching this any tanking tips for tanking the Rider? Tanking the Griffin? No, the rider, the golem way in this particular fight. Am Do you I, have am anything? I on, am I on the griffin or the boss now? Uh, the boss, the boss, the okay. rider, yeah. No, so, griffin just, I don't know, dodge, dodge roll, dodge roll, basically. Dodge roll, dodge roll, yes. And what about the, what about the boss then? Do you have anything you would like to add? No, not really, no. Not really, not really. There's like a, the, Keep him the calm. Get him back to the same place at all. Yes, so about positioning, uh, I'm guessing, Fire, you're okay with keeping the, the, I'm gonna say boss now, but you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah I so, know. Uh, the rider, yeah. So you're gonna yeah. keep the rider at the flag, kind of where the right creeper is, sort of, right now, yeah. from our positioning. Yeah. And then Ark will keep the griffin sort of on this side, more kind of using the left flag as a waypoint, but keeping it more towards the entrance. Got it. Good job, Ark. Now you want to start going to your right, Ark. You're a bit too close to the mini boss position. Dropping off those. Moving. Sorry, it was a bit close. So that they are nice and separate. And I will try to help you out. So just focus on dodging that and surviving it. And Kelly, you will be in charge of giving fire spears. 
So okay. you will focus on throwing spears on Ryder, and I will focus on throwing spears to Arcanir by the Griffin. Perfect. All right. Are there any questions? All righty. Let's nope. go for it. After you guys. <laughs> so grab that monstrosity and stack it on the on the creeper. So we can nuke it all down together. Basically, the portals, portal groups will be the same now. For this fight and the next fight as well, there will be no tanks down. So as soon as we call out the portal groups, DGs, feel free to go down. Now, uh, on Servoria, we will have the Roaring Flame mechanic. Now, the positioning is going to be the same here. We're going to stack on the Griffin's tail when the Griffin is down, and we're going to go and nuke the boss when the Griffin is flying. The Roaring Flame mechanic will be an orange circle that will be placed on a random player around their feet, and when they get this, that person needs to stand still if, or get near the group if possible. Um, because people need to stand with you inside this group. So if possible, stand still and let others come to you. If you know you are way off and you see a big group of players, obviously you can run to it. But remember that you don't have a lot of time. So keep calm and get into a group of random players. Also call it out when you get this. Say roaring flame on me or fire on me. Um, now this rider, this boss, will teleport, and when she lands, she's gonna have this huge fire AoE that will happen on that spot and create moving fires from it. So it's gonna be like a big blast, a big impact where she lands, and then it's going to split up into different fires. So be aware and avoid these. Now the tank that holds the rider can make a call out when she teleports to help us to see this. So fire, if you see her about to jump or teleport, you can just call it out. If you don't mind. Yes. Cool. Yes. But for now, we're going to keep focused on Reliquin here and Belanaril. I can't believe I just pronounced that, but I did apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Reliquin has the Voltaic Overload mechanic. Now, Voltaic Overload, what is it? It is something that will hit a random player. This, if you have road no Raid Notifier, it's going to give you a little countdown. Your, per your screen will turn blue the floor on the screen. So basically the entire Vena here will turn as if, you ha if it has some kind of blue AOE on it. And when this happens, that means you're on the wrong bar. You need to swap. So as long as you don't have the blue, you're fine. If you stay on that blue bar, you will slowly fry your teammates around you. So that's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So blue equals bad, you need to swap. And then you need to stay there for another 10 seconds. So if you get that countdown, it's going to tell you to uh, just don't swap. Actually, you still can. However, I would recommend that you use all the skills you need to use on that bar and then be prepared to swap. Uh, the rider here will place these three shock AoEs on random players. And this is a nasty stun. However, this mechanic can and needs to be interrupted ASAP by the person tanking the rider. So that would be you, Fire. If Fire is dead, we need to have more interrupts on the rider if that happens which i'm pretty sure it will so samaja she's a big slow let's stack on her tail whenever we're up here tank will turn her away now the reason why we stack and we practice stacking not only is it easier for the healers to heal you all through it but it's also going to be easier when we try this on plus anything because when someone sheds Horfrost, if we're going to do Horfrost next, uh, it's going to be easily picked up by someone else. If you get Roaring Flame, obviously everyone's stacked together and stuff like that. So that's why we're training to stack. So what I want you guys to focus on now, since this is our second time in here, I want you to focus on moving as fast as possible to the boss's next position. That's going to be on everyone. This is something we really need to start focusing on if we are going to make it to plus one and plus two and stuff like that. Uh, there are a couple of different ads, as we can see here, on this little buffet laid up for us. We have the monstrosities. They are, as they are named, a cup fucking monstrosity. Sorry for language. They put nasty debuffs on people, alright? Now, we want those to go down as soon as possible. After you kill the monstrosity, you need to kill the creepers and then the rest. The creepers put a silence on you. Uh, which is really, really nasty. So that's why they go down next. Basically, many, mini Veladreths. Yes, the spider stuff. Um, now, also, there's going to be bad floating bubbles. 
the purple bubbles. Now, the purple bubbles need to go down really fast as well. Why? Because when you walk into them or they hit someone, they split up into small purple bubbles. Now, these small purple bubbles, that's a lot to say, small purple bubbles, they actually stun. Stun is insta-death for most tanks in here. Unless you're very lucky. And you have an amazing stamina pool to break free with. Which you're not always going to have in this fight. So stun equals super bad. That's why all the small purple bubbles. Especially the ones close to tank. Or any any bubble that risks getting like ran into by anyone. Needs to die. So let's take a look at who we have on range DPS now. So I know we have Kitsune. We have... Let's say we have Elric. You're playing your sword, yeah? Um, let's see, we have Burn Tricks, Metal Jumper. You guys are Magicka. That means you have very strong range DPS. I also see that we have Verde on a Stam Blade, for example. Sam, you're on a Necro. You also, you can throw some skulls or whatever you have at your disposal at these things. Mm -hmm. um, but I want all Magicka DDs to be on special duty when it comes to this. All right? So that means when, when guys are in portal, obviously they can't do this. So keep a mental note. You're extra important when you're not in portal to take care of these bubbles. As I've said before, obviously everyone else can get to kill bubbles. Healer, if, if everything is safe and you have a beam, go beam it. Um, Kelly is going to be our kite healer, if you still want to. Of course, yeah. Yep, yeah. all right. So the kite healer will have two major jobs. One will be to point out spears. If she is close to it, she will take it. If she's not, she will call out where the spear is in relation to the group so that DDs have a chance to take it. Um, I also want to know, uh, Kelly, do you have nameplates on for everyone? Uh, yeah, just a normal name, like um, Sam Sigata. Uh, Igari, as normal. Yeah, exactly. So it's used already. Perfect. Then you can call out. If you see someone really close to a spear that you can't take, you ask that person to go take it. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's more the other way around. Like, um, what happened last time, the people went for it while standing next to it. Then, like, you, you should be... You can DPS. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's better if you, uh, if you take charge and you say, like... Elric, get that spear, or something like that, or spear to your left, or something like that. If you, if that's not too much trouble for you, I think that would be easier, actually. Um, you're also in charge of calling out bad bubbles when you see them. Uh, I'm going to be healer that's going to be stacked on the group, and also in charge of giving the main tank, at the time, resources. So that means I will call out if there's a bubble that I like see right next to the tank, or something like that. Otherwise, I'll leave it to you. If that is all right. Yeah. You have raid notifiers, so you will be able to see like spheres spawning, spheres about to spawn, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. Sorry, I was a bit distracted, but sorry. Yep, I will go out, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, say bad bubbles or orbs or something like that. Bubbles yeah. is good because it can't be confused with anything Ooh. else, like spheres or something like that. All right. Um, now, portal groups. So, the portal mechanic will be the same. But there is one difference. There will be a boss down there. So this is where it gets really, really, really important. I can't stress this enough. That you wait until the tank says tank inside. Now tanks, you don't say tank inside until you're in and you have taunt. So as soon as you puncture that slowed, you say tank inside. Part of group two. Tank in. Not when you go through, when you puncture her or taunt her. Yes. All right. And also very important is that there will be a big AOE that she's going to put on the floor down there. You're all familiar with it, but I'm going to describe it for anyone watching. Now, the big AOE on the floor is going to be like centered around the Samaja and then spread out to the entire arena. When this happens down in the portal, you will see these platforms. There's, the portal realm is going to be like a miniature version of this. So when you see this portal, um, th th this platform, sorry, you will see a little pad next to it. I don't want to aggro this small straw city, so I'm going to go over here and you just imagine something being like right here. All right? It's going to be a little pad. It's going to give you a synergy called Winds of the Welkinar. 
you move to that pad and that will levitate you up to this platform. Meaning you are safe from the AOE downstairs. Now, once this AOE has passed, you need to get off this platform. Do not jump. You walk off or you roll dodge off. Do not jump. All right? So once you've gone down from the platform, it's rinse repeat. The mechanics are the same. You kill the crystals, you wait for a spear to come down to you. When you see the spear, and only when you see the spear, do you pick up a purple orb and walk it to the spear. All right. Now, remember your... Uh, I want a portal group to tell me who is their buddy. Burn. Elric and Sam? No, uh, Eva. No, Eva, right. Elric and Eva. Dragons and Bert. Yeah. So, Sam and Kitsune, Elric and Eva, Burntrix and Drakens. And obviously tanks. <laughs> but you guys know this. So I want some clear, like, I want the voice channel. You've done so great. Let me, can, I, can I just say shout out to everyone for keeping the voice chat so focused? This is, like, so great. I'm super proud of you. Keep it on. Keep it up. And... Make sure that tanks have a clear space in the voice channel for their callouts. It's super important. When we say portal group one, that doesn't mean all DDs press the portal. It means listen for fire. When we say portal group two, that doesn't mean go down portal. It means listen for arc. Wait for that signal. This is super important. DDs, you have two very important jobs here today. It is to get into position of Samaja as fast as possible, and it's to never ever ever go in portal before your tank if you die you call it out nice and clear if you are in the portal group you say the buddy's name elric if you die you say eva go down i'm dead all right and that goes yep. for all of you now a very very important thing as well when we talk about resting here look at the corpse before you even press res. If the corp is purple and kind of black swirly, that means it's bad juju, you will insta-die if you even press res. Okay? So I know we have some really eager, very good resters in here, but you guys need to like curb your enthusiasm a little bit. Because if you press res too quickly, you will die. And it's going to be even harder to get a res chain going. So how do you know if it's safe to rest? If you look at the body and it doesn't have that purple swirl, the darkness coming, oozing out of them, you're safe to rest. All right? Now, how do we make sure that a body is safe to rest? We have to kill the shade that appears. It's basically going to be like a black ghost that appears as soon as someone dies. It's going to hover over the body for a little bit, then it's going to teleport all around. So it's not always going to be close to the body. Okay, it can be anywhere. So, DDs, the only thing that takes priority over killing like a monstrosity or anything else is to kill those. It's going to be, I think it's called Soul of the Fallen or something like shadow that. Yeah, the Shadow of the Fallen. Shade? Yes, thank you. Yeah, or Shade or something like that. You'll see it. It's, it's hard to miss. It doesn't look like anything else. Once you see one of those ghosties running around, that means someone is waiting to be rest but can't be rest yet. As you can imagine, this is super high priority. All right? The only thing that takes priority over a Shadow of the Fallen if, is if you see an orb two centimeters from a tank. Otherwise, you get that shade. All right? If you are a DD and you get the beam on you, move it out of the group. The beams should, in a, in a perfect scenario, it should always land on the tank and on the kite healer. But this is subject to changes, especially if it's really chaotic and people are all over the place. Um, so if you get a beam from Samaja on you, make sure you kite it away and out of danger for anyone else. All right? You can I still do damage from a range. This. No. You okay, yelling. <laughs> I was like yelling and you were like, what? <laughs> I felt so bad. Okay. So, and I'm sorry in advance, I, there will not be yelling, I don't have a headache this time, so it will be fine. But, just checking, like, make sure that beam is away so people don't get in trouble for it. Obviously, for tanks, uh, there's no roll dodging in this fight. The only oh. thing you can roll dodge is if you are off tank and that monstrosity is on you. Alright? If that monstrosity is on you and you get the baneful barb, 
you will see it, it's, if you can see it, she's gonna raise her front Veladrith legs. They're gonna shine a little purpley. And then you have like a millisecond to roll dodge or you're dead. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really dead, but you're gonna be half dead. Um, so this is like super important. Uh, if you, that's the only time you roll dodge in here. You never roll dodge Samaja, you only block. And then you kite around the laser. No, 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 no. Okay, so one thing about execute phase. One tank will take the boss, and the off tank and kite healer will take one side each and kite the lasers. Because I'm pretty sure we're going to get her to execute today. Now, when she goes to execute, that means basically the big slow body she's in now is going to die. And then she's going to spawn a big shade of herself in the middle of the arena. So during execute phase, uh, healer, you need to be... Uh, like, how is it? Does it matter if it's the off tank behind the the main tank or should it be the healer? I'm not sure. How do you guys usually do with fire? No, just, well, you know, the Kaiser will move behind the tail all the way in the mm -hmm. back. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So, but Kelly... You can't front kite anymore and they patched it. Oh, they patched it? Yeah, so the tank oh. who got torn is always gonna get it, but I'm mm -hmm. staying in front. If he tanks, I'll just stay in the back and take over if he doesn't get back up. All right, so you'll be more like backup tank, but there's no kiting yes. of the front laser. Okay, got it. Thank you. So yeah, Kelly, you will stay in back and kite the laser, same as you've always done. Just make sure that you're the furthest away from the tank out of the entire group in that direction. Yeah, yep. yes. Uh, so remember also that this is not only a DPS race at that point, it's also a healing race because there will be a debuff placed on everyone by Samaja. So this needs to be out healed once it's applied to the player. The player needs to get up to full health. Otherwise the debuff won't disappear. So we will have our hands full here, Kelly, when this happens, but we'll get through it. And yes, and make sure to give everything to the DPS that we can possibly get. Give them like the combat prayer, all the debuffs, all the good stuff. But yeah. So basically what's, what's going to happen when you know she's in execute is that the main boss will die and she will spawn a big shadow version of herself in the middle of arena. You can't miss it. Um, so what, once she does, get into position kind of where the Yagra larva is now. You see yep. it? The little... Yeah. That's basically where you go when it's execute phase time. So kind of here. Yep. Yeah, I'm so careful now, so I don't <laughs> start the fight. All right, that's basically where you go, and then you taunt her, and everyone stacks on her tail. So kind of where Samaja is, is resting right now. That's where everyone else will stand. 